Hello everyone, Roger Moss here, President and CEO of Labrador Gold Corp. Following up on our recent news release of our 10,000 meter drilling program at Kingsway, we thought it would be a good idea to bring together some of the information that's out there on Big Vein and the surrounding Quartz Vein Corridor in one place so that you can get a sense of what it is we're trying to achieve here and why we think it's so exciting. So hopefully this presentation will do that and uh, I'll talk you through it over the next 10, 10 minutes or so and uh, give you a, a sense of what it is we're looking at in this particular area. This is our disclaimer. As uh, you know, I will be making forward-looking statements during this presentation. And so please uh, take a moment to read this when you get the chance and uh, look at the presentation with these notes in mind. I'd like to start first with the biggest scale and that's the quartz vein corridor and then work our way down to uh, the big vein area and uh, our discovery of the visible gold in that area. So this is a, this is a geological map that shows the outline of the quartz vein corridor shown here in red, a little bit up there in the Northeast. And it extends from the Northeast seven and a half kilometers down to the Southwest. And it's adjacent to this dashed line here, which is the Appleton Fault Zone. Coming off the Appleton Fault Zone, there are two splays going up towards the Southwest. And we can see that one of the splays is close to the visible gold location uh, situated right here. We can't see Big Vein, but Big Vein is just in behind the, the visible gold location down there. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, first off, I want to go through the, the Quartz Vein corridor. The geology, as you can see here on our legend, is mostly shales, siltstones, and some sandstones, uh, green, green, black, pyritic, and gray shales, all from the Davidsville group very similar to the hosts of mineralization elsewhere in the district. These are till samples that were taken from uh, 2017 to 2019 by Talk Resources. And uh, what I've highlighted here are a couple of things. On the left, we have, we have gold in PPM and on the right, copper in PPM. So we can see in both cases that we do have some kind of trends going along the quartz main corridor adjacent to the Appleton fault zone. It shows be up better in the copper than it does in the gold, but uh, we can still see some anomalies in the gold. And just for your information, the, the, the purple maroon color is the highest going down to yellow, um, which is the lowest anomalous values. And then the black, the black, Diamonds are um, the lowest, the lowest values, but they do show where we, the samples were taken. And uh, as you can see, there's a, there's a good density of samples throughout this uh, this area. Now, one of one of the things you might be asking is, well, why why worry about copper when you're looking for gold? And the answer to that is that we know that, for example, at the Keith showing, some of the gold mineralization down there is associated with chalcopyrite which is a copper sulfide. And so looking at the copper distribution in the till may give us a sense of where chalcopyrite may be occurring and that may be associated with gold mineralization. And similarly with these two diagrams, one is lead on the left and, and antimony on the right. The, those two metals, lead and antimony form part of a mineral called boulangerite which is also associated with the gold mineralization down at the Keats, the Keats showing. And uh, so if we have this trend in lead and the trend in antimony, and as you can see, they're very, very remarkably consistent going along the Quartz Bank corridor and uh, also spatially, spatially this, the same um, in terms of the antimony and the lead. And so, um, there's a possibility that that may be reflecting some boulangerite in the area. We have not seen boulangerite in the quartz vein samples that we've, we've assayed to date. 
but um, it may it may be there. We have seen charcoal pyrite associated with the gold mineralization down at down at Big Vein and in the surrounding veins in the quartz vein corridor. So um, we do know that there's some charcoal pyrite associated with the gold here. Yeah. Uh, last couple of slides here on the quartz vein corridor. This one is interesting. This is historical data that um, shows two anomalous areas here to the north of our, our visible gold occurrence. The first one is, is just a, a few hundred meters to the north, but this one up here, which is actually stronger, as you can see here, the, the again, the, um, the, the, the purple diamonds are the highest, in this case, greater than 10,000 ppb in these heavy mineral concentrates. And uh, that's about two kilometers from the, um, from, from the visible gold occurrences. So what we, what we know is that one of the predominant directions of ice flow is from south to north. So the glaciers would have been going up in this direction. It's a lot more complicated in detail, but in general, there's a there's a northerly trend to the to the most predominant ice, ice direction. So so that's um, that indicates that this uh, anomaly down here could certainly come from the gold the visible gold occurrences. Um, this one could too, but that's uh, two kilometers is quite a ways for that to that to travel. And so there is a possibility that uh, somewhere between this visible gold occurrence and this anomalous area up here is uh, there, may, there may be something else that's uh, as yet undiscovered. Um, and as you can see, there's not a, a lot of samples in this area in between those two, those two anomalies that would uh, necessarily identify such, a, um, such an occurrence in between these two anomalies. So that's, that's something that's, that's interesting. It's, it's, it's on the back burner for now because we are concentrated on, on Big Vein and the Quartz Vein Corridor. But uh, certainly there could be another target coming up in here in, in the future. The slide on the right shows um, some of the results of our soil sampling program. As you know, we took a lot of soil samples, I think uh, on the order of just under 9,000 soil samples. Um, and this is what it looks like in the, in the area along the quartz vein corridor. You can see here over Big Vein, there's a, there's a large anomaly that's, that's covering it. Um, and then up towards the uh, northeast, there's a there's a long anomaly that is um, that is somewhat somewhat uh, spatial spatially associated with the the quartz vein corridor, and then a few other anomalies up to the up to the northwest, and then a few smaller anomalies um, down here down to the down to the southwest. So um, that's what the that's what the soils look like. The next slide is we're going to hone into Big Vein, and that's going to be right around here. And we're going to see the details of some of those soil samples and, uh, and some of the details of the, um, the visible gold occurrences. So here are, the, here are the visible gold occurrences. They're resolved now into two, two areas, um, four or five samples that uh, we see uh, containing visible gold. Uh, and we see the big vein now and what, what it looks like. It stretches over about 400 meters. Um, there is a jog right here in, in the vein where it goes from predominantly, predominantly north, northeast trending to more northerly trending. And uh, that's pretty close to where we see one of these, um, one of these visible gold occurrences. So very interesting that that, uh, that jog is, is where we see some of the gold. And um, we know that such jogs in the stratigraphy and in the veining um, are very good places to have um, to, to find gold mineralization. So perhaps no surprise that we found this uh, where, where we did. I mentioned the soil sampling, and here it is. Um, these are the soil sampling lines. Um, they are about 100 meters apart, and the soil samples on each line are about 25 meters apart. So we're looking at from here down to here, we're looking at about 300 meters. Um, and you can see that, that even though our, our uh, visible gold occurrences are up here, the, the gold anomalies aren't very strong right there. 
perhaps if we had them right over in this in this area might have been better but they are quite strong as we go further to the southwest and in fact the highest the highest uh, gold value on the property is this 9.9 .9 grams a ton and this is in soil remember uh, right here and uh, so that's something that's uh, it's it looks like it's off the vein maybe there's a buried maybe there's a buried splay off this vein that's coming through here or a parallel vein but uh, we we haven't didn't have the time to follow that up in any great detail and uh, it's something that we will be drilling underneath as I'll show you in in, in a minute so um, the soil anomalies do do go for 300 meters down to the southwest of where we found this this um, visible gold mineralization. So that's that's very encouraging. It suggests that uh, we could have more gold all the way along this uh, this big vein down to the southwest. Uh, one one other thing to note here is that uh, here you can see that quartz vein breccia I mentioned earlier. It's uh, located just on top of the um, of the quartz vein in its contact with the with the black shale here, and you can you may be able to make out some folds some folds in here. The the area is quite folded, and uh, that's a, that's another a good indication that we have um, we have some fold fold noses that uh, may may be the area of focus of of gold mineralization. So. Uh, a lot of positives to look at here in, in the area around the big vein. This is the same, uh, a, bit, a bit of a bigger uh, diagram of, of the big vein. Again, you can see the 400 meter length shown here. I've got uh, outline of the vein corridor coming through here. Um, I don't have the Appleton fault, but that would be coming up along here as well. And what I, what I just wanted to show here is, is some, of the, um, some of the results that we've had um, in, in the rocks. And really what, what I think stands out is that if you go from up here in, in the north through the jog and down, down here into this area, that's, that's, a, that's about 100 meters of, of strike length in this, in this vein. And we have a lot, of, a lot of plus one gram per ton material and some fantastic results. Obviously we got, you know, what, 1,065 grams a ton where we had the, uh, the spectacular visible gold in the quartz vein. Um, but there are other, quite, quite a lot of others, 168, and uh, some high, high gold numbers right in around here where we've seen the visible gold. And uh, we, even have, we even have a plus one gram a ton down here. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of samples still to come in this area, as well as, as, well as samples further to the southwest where we found some good looking quartz veining, uh, but the samples haven't been, have, haven't been returned from the lab yet. So we're still waiting, we're still waiting for those. So here we get onto the drilling a little bit. And uh, again, this is the, uh, this is the outline of the big vein. Now, the, here's, the, here's the vein corridor, the outline of the vein corridor, and here's the, the the Appleton fault zone as we've interpreted it. And what you're seeing here in the background is uh, the results of our VLF EM surveying. And this is, this is resistivity. And you can see that there's a really good spatial correlation between the quartz vein corridor that we see here outlined in the red and these high uh, resistivity values that are shown in, in the purples and reds. So we're we're up in this area here, high resistivity. And we can understand that um, the high resistivity around the uh, around big vein, because of course it's gonna be more resistive than the, the surrounding rock, but there's a lot of resistivity that goes on further than uh, big vein. And that resistivity could be due to more quartz veining or, or and also, uh, due to solidification of the surrounding sediments. So uh, a very good, very good resistivity anomaly going almost, almost contained within that quartz vein corridor. And the vein corridor is, um, was, was not interpreted from the resistivity. The vein corridor is basically uh, outlining the areas that we've had intermittent quartz veining in this, in this 
northeast-southwest corridor that extends over the seven and a half kilometers. So again, it's a very, it's a very good, very, very good sign that we have this this resistivity and and perhaps lots more quartz veining and slip solidification um, around the big vein itself. And here are a couple of the sections of the diamond drilling. Uh, we we do have um, we do have holes coming down here. These are also these, these, this is also resistivity in the background. And uh, again, you can see these these highly resistive areas uh, on the section here. We've got a few um, a few drill holes uh, from the same from the same setup, drilling angled holes to intersect it at, at different different depths. Uh, you can see some of the rock samples that are shown here up near the surface. This is where the visible gold occurrence is. That 1,065 ppm gold uh, right up there. And this is the interpretation of the um, of the big big vein at depth, and uh, where we uh, hope to intersect it. Now you might you might wonder, well, if if that's where the vein is, and why why are we going all the way through here? Well, there's obviously a a, a chance that there will be um, there will be more quartz veins below below this um, below big vein, and uh, we can we can see that there is a, a large uh, a large resistivity anomaly on this side of the vein. So uh, we want to at least initially check to see if there are any other quartz veins or, or major solidified areas um, that are associated with big vein. And similarly, down in the bottom here, this is, uh, there's some soil samples. This is the big one, the 9.9 .9 gram a ton soil sample. So uh, we're stepping back a little bit on, uh, on, on this fence so that we can get uh, to see what, what is under there, if anything, and uh, we'll intersect the big vein uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at depth down here. Um, some of the other um, two, two holes here plan to go down into, into big vein a little, a little closer. And again, a scissor, a scissor to inter intersect at different, different depths. So I think that's, um, that gives you some idea of uh, what we have. We, we, we think it's really exciting we're really looking forward to getting out there and drilling. As I mentioned in our news release, we are still waiting for permits. Um, but as soon as those permits come, we are, uh, we are gonna be ready to go and uh, really looking forward to it. And uh, we think there's a good chance we could be making a discovery um, there on Big Vein uh, in the next few months. So I hope you will follow along and uh, track our progress. Uh, one way of doing that, of course, is by looking at our, uh, our website. I would really encourage you to, to look at our YouTube videos and especially one called uh, The Golden Rock. It's shot on location out in the field. It's, it's shot by a, uh, a video, videographer, Stefan Ranstrom, who's worked for National Geographic and the Discovery Channel. And he did a great job of just capturing what it's like working out in the field. Um, in Newfoundland on, on, on our exploration program. So I, if you haven't already seen it, I would really encourage you. It, it's, a great, it's a great little film. It's only about uh, six, seven minutes long, but uh, wow, it's, uh, it's really good. And of course, our Twitter feed there at Lab Gold Corp uh, is where we, we post a lot of, uh, a lot of information that uh, is coming out, including all our news releases. So um, anyway, I hope you uh, feel like you know a little bit more. Uh, any questions, uh, certainly you can, you can write me, email me, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, thanks very much for your attention.